So let's continue our look at the insane icon in Impact Wrestling, maybe better known as the Joker Sting. Our last video left off at the Midsummer Nightmare. Sting had just reclaimed the heavyweight championship from Mr. Anderson, and now it looks like Sting is on a collision course with Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle. I highly recommend checking out the first insane icon upload that I put on the channel a few days ago if you haven't done so already, as this video is a direct continuation. On the 21st of July 2011 edition of Impact Wrestling, this stinger opened up the show. Sting said he's on top of the world, he's got the heavyweight title, and he knows Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff want the championship. Sting said that in a regular promo, this would be the part where he says we can do things the easy way or we can do it the hard way, but not this time. Hogan and Bischoff were going to do things the Sting way. Sting calls out Bischoff and Hogan, but instead Sting gets Kurt Angle, his upcoming opponent at Hardcore Justice. Angle says he helped Sting last week because it was the right thing to do, but in Sting's quest to save Impact Wrestling for Dixie Carter, the insane icon has run into a speed bump, and that speed bump is Kurt Angle. Angle says he won't settle for second best, he's coming after Sting's championship, and then Mr. Anderson and Bully Ray interrupt the promo. Bully Ray says that Sting and Angle need to work together later in the evening. We have Sting and Kurt Angle taking on Ray and Anderson in tonight's main event. It wasn't the babyfaces who had a problem working together though. There seemed to be a little dissension among Bully Ray and Mr. Anderson. The tag match was pretty short and Sting and Angle picked up the victory. The babyfaces did shake hands afterwards though Angle pulled Sting in for a stare down. You've probably seen a lot of clips from the next edition of Impact. This is the one that people usually think of when they think of Joker Sting. Segments of this Impact have been re-uploaded quite a bit and for good reason too. Sting was excellent throughout this whole show and Steve Borden got the opportunity to really show off what this new version of Sting was all about. The show kicked off with Kurt Angle requesting that Hulk Hogan comes to the ring. Kurt says that Hogan had been calling him and calling him, but Kurt refused to answer, and Angle thought that Hogan got the hint that the Olympic gold medalist had no interest in joining Immortal. Angle says Immortal doesn't appeal to him, at Hardcore Justice Kurt Angle will beat Sting, but he isn't doing it for Hulk Hogan and he isn't doing it for Immortal. Kurt tells Hogan that if he wants to get rid of Sting, then he should step into the ring and do it himself. After the promo, Eric Bischoff gets handed an envelope from the network, and Bischoff gathers Immortal in his office to reveal the details about the letter he just received. Hulk Hogan walks in, he's furious over Kurt Angle, and Bully Ray decides to volunteer Mr. Anderson to face Angle later in the evening. Anderson isn't pleased, but he agrees to do it. As Bischoff continues to read the letter, the Stinger walks in, and he's holding a cage. It's hard to put into words how good Sting was, in this segment, but the whole insane icon gimmick was turned up a notch here. Sting kind of reminded me of Jim Carrey also during this particular segment. Anyway, after giving Karen Angle a hug, Sting takes a seat and he announces that he's been made the new network executive. The first thing Sting does as the new executive is change the Anderson vs Angle main event into a steel cage match. Anderson, of course, is totally pissed off. Sting leaves the office while announcing that Fortune will also surround the ring to make sure there's no interference from Immortal. Sting does his rounds backstage while holding his cage. The big question, of course, is what was inside the cage. Sting tells AJ Styles that the contents of the cage is a surprise for Eric Bischoff. Sting pays a visit to Eric's office. Bischoff is on the phone and he's complaining to the network about the new appointed network executive. Sting walks in and the insane icon reveals that he lied. The Stinger pretends to cry as he makes a confession. He isn't the network executive. He made it all up so he could book the Steel Cage main event. Sting said that when you wear a suit, people tend to believe you and it feels good. But what's going to feel good for Eric Bischoff is what's hiding inside his cage. 
It's a crow. As the crow sits atop Eric's monitor, the stinger reminds Eric about Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. And yeah, Eric Bischoff sells to the bird. The crow holds Easy e hostage as Sting leaves the room. Kurt Angle wins the cage match and after the bout, Sting appears in the ring. Sting raises Kurt's hand before reminding Angle that it's only 10 days until hardcore justice. If you want to see the Joker Sting at his very best, then check out this whole episode of impact. The following week, a contract signing was held. Angle says that this match at Hardcore Justice is nothing personal and he'll still shake Sting's hand after he wins the world title. Kurt has never beat Sting without outside interference, so Angle is keen to test himself at the pay-per-view. Sting says he respects Kurt Angle, but Kurt will have to kill Sting to win the championship. Kurt Angle won the heavyweight title at Hardcore Justice and he didn't even have to murder Sting to do it. A decent match here but you kind of expect more when you see Kurt Angle vs Sting on paper. Hulk Hogan comes out holding a chair. Kurt Angle takes the chair away while reminding the Hulkster that he doesn't want any outside interference during this match. This doesn't stop Angle from using the chair on Sting though. Sting gets hit on the back while the referee is out cold. Kurt then delivers the Angle slam and we have a new champion. Hulk Hogan and Kurt Angle stare at each other to end the show. Some serious hotshotting going on here with the TNA title for sure, but the insane icon left Hardcore Justice without the belt. Kurt Angle comes out on the following episode of Impact. Remember how Sting wanted the hand control of Impact Wrestling back to Dixie Carter? Well, Kurt Angle has other plans. Kurt says that Dixie knew about his ex-wife Karen's relationship with Jeff Jarrett, and because of this, Kurt Angle will do everything he can to stop Dixie gaining control of Impact. Angle leaves the ring, but Sting shows up with his trusty baseball bat. Sting whacks the steel chair from Angle's hand and a fight breaks out. Hulk Hogan then makes an appearance and he hits Sting on the back. Kurt then reveals that Hulk Hogan has just invested in Kurt Angle and Sting continues to take a beating from the Hulkster. Kurt Angle was now a member of Immortal. The following week, we got to see more excellent character work from Sting. The Stinger opens up Impact and he reenacts the beating he took the previous week during his entrance. Sting bumps on the rampway and he bumps in the ring before admitting that it was pretty awesome to have his ass kicked by the greatest of all time, Hulk Hogan. Sting says that Hogan still has the eye of the tiger and Sting wants to see the Hulkster back in the ring. Sting wants a match with Hogan to tonight, but he's interrupted by the nature boy Ric Flair. Flair can't believe that Sting just called Hogan the greatest of all time. Flair says that Sting is the icon, and time and time again, the nature boy is asked when is he going to step back into the ring one more time with the Stinger. Flair wants a match with Sting. If Flair wins, Sting has to retire, but if Sting wins, then Hulk Hogan will be served to the Stinger on a silver platter. Sting accepts the match. A little later, Flair enters Hogan's office and Hogan is completely livid about Flair's conversation with Sting. This was a great little segment too that saw the nature boy trying desperately to calm the Hulkster down. Flair says that he's got this, but Hogan isn't convinced. Flair goes looking for Sting a little later on. He finds the insane icon beating up Gunner, and Flair decides that he wants nothing to do with this beating, and he lets Sting continue on with his business. So on the August 25th episode of Impact, we see someone walking around wearing a pair of military boots, but we don't see who it is. Keep this in mind. Eric Bischoff and Hulk Hogan tell Ric Flair that Sting isn't the same person Flair wrestled all those years ago. He's different and he's more dangerous. Bischoff wants to stop the Flair vs Sting match from happening, and Flair questions the lack of confidence that Bischoff and Hogan have in the Nature Boy. We see the military boots again, and still there's no reveal. Hogan and Flair come to the ring to cut a promo. The Hulkster wants to resolve this thing in a calm and peaceful manner, and Flair promises Hulk that he won't say a word. 
Sting then comes out and Hulk Hogan says that he wants all this craziness to stop and he'll do anything at all in order to make it all go away. Sting says he wants milk and cookies for everyone in the impact zone. Sting also wants puppies. He wants flowers and the Stinger gives Hogan a nice big hug and a big kiss. Flair just can't help himself. Flair grabs the mic from Hulk and the Nature Boy says that he's even more crazy than the insane icon. Flair says that he has the edge over Sting because Sting respects Flair too much to hurt him. When it's time to go for the kill, Sting is going to ease up and that's when Flair will put an end to the Stinger. Sting is happy to hear from someone just as crazy as he is and Sting requests the Hogan match at Bound for Glory if he can beat Flair of course. So the Hulkster didn't get the calm resolution he was hoping for. The following week Hogan confirms that the network has agreed to the Flair vs Sting match. It's going to take place on the 15th of September and the stipulations that Flair added to the match have also been agreed upon. On. If Sting beats Flair, then we'll get to see Hogan vs Sting at Bound for Glory. Kurt Angle shows up and he says that Hogan's enemies are his enemies also. Hogan asks Angle to get rid of Sting and Sting then interrupts the festivities by saying he'll be happy to wrestle Kurt Angle tonight on Impact. Sting says he'll go through both Angle and Flair to get his grand prize, a match with the Hulkster on pay-per-view. Hogan announces that he's going to be the special enforcer for Sting's match with Angle and during the main event Hogan got involved. After interference from Gunner the Hulkster hits Sting with a steel chair but Sting no sells it. Hogan gets backed into a corner but Immortal hit the ring to attack Sting. Mr Anderson's music then plays in the arena. Remember Anderson had some issues with Immortal mainly caused by Bully Ray. Anderson has Sting's baseball bat and he clears Immortal out of the ring. Those military boots that were walking around the impact zone those belonged to Mr. Anderson. A Kurt Angle vs Mr. Anderson match was scheduled for the next episode of Impact and Sting announces that the network has made him the special enforcer. After a referee bump, Kurt Angle hits a low blow on Anderson. Mr. Anderson then hits the mic check but Gunner runs in, leading to a DQ finish. Anderson and Sting then take a beating from Immortal and afterwards, Immortal decided to celebrate by throwing a party in Eric Bischoff's office. Eric ends up throwing everyone out after receiving a phone call, Eric sounded really distraught during this phone conversation. A little later Hulk Hogan continues to celebrate but Eric reveals that the network just called him and they booked a match for the No Surrender show. Kurt Angle will have to defend the gold against Sting and Anderson in a triple threat match. At the pay-per-view, Hogan again interfered, spraying something in Sting's eyes that we assume was pepper spray. This led to Sting getting low blowed, Angle hits the Angle slam and Kurt remains the heavyweight champion. Also at No Surrender, Bobby Roode won the Bound for Glory series and this meant that Roode was going to get a championship match at the Bound for Glory pay-per-view. The Flair vs Sting match would take place then on the following episode of Impact. The two legends shared some words at the beginning of the show. Flair said this match is going to be Icon vs God. Sting wants to go right away but security stopped this from happening. Flair and Sting will have to wait until the main event. A little later Flair and Hogan are backstage talking about a possible plan B should things not work out as intended. And then Sting makes an appearance. Sting wants to be let in on the plan before revealing his own strategy for tonight's main event. Sting is going to go through Ric Flair and he's going to destroy Hogan at Bound for Glory. Sting then promises Hogan that he will win tonight. And so here we are, Flair vs Sting one more time. This would turn out to be Ric Flair's true final match in wrestling, so it's a pretty big deal. Unfortunately it's riddled with interference, but at the same time it's Flair vs Sting. It's still kind of special to see these two in the ring, especially for those who followed their careers since the early days. Immortal runs in and Bully Ray has his chain wrapped around his knuckles. Mr Anderson runs down with a steel chair to even the odds. Hulk Hogan then shows up and he passes some brass knucks to the nature boy. Sting gets leveled but it isn't enough. Sting kicks out at two. We see the stinger splash, we see the scorpion deathlock. Flair submits, the Hogan vs Sting match is made official and the show comes to an end with the Stinger and the Hulkster staring at each other. 
Sting showed up the next week holding a match contract. Hogan gets called out and Hogan reveals that he's not medically cleared to wrestle. Sting shows footage of Hogan hitting him with a steel chair. If Hogan was well enough to do that, then he's well enough to step into the ring. Eric Bischoff comes down telling Sting to remember who he's talking to. Sting completely ignores Eric throughout the whole promo. Eric keeps trying to get Sting's attention and the Stinger ends up punching Bischoff in the mouth after asking Eric if he had just said something. Good stuff. Later on, Bischoff and Hogan try to think of a way to get the Hulkster out of the match and Hogan says he'll drop a bombshell on the entire company next week. Bobby Roode and the Fortune Stable would then get added to this rivalry in a much more prominent manner. Roode was going after Kurt Angle's championship and the Stinger wanted to make sure Roode was ready to take on the Olympic gold medalist. If Roode could take care of Angle, then Sting would take care of Hogan. The end result being here that Impact Wrestling would get handed back to Dixie Carter. Kurt Angle tried to cause some dissension within Fortune, promising the other stable members that if they can beat Roode in a one-on-one -on -one match, then Angle would grant them a title shot. Hulk Hogan's big announcement then was his retirement from professional wrestling. And give the Hulkster credit here, he gave a good performance. While Hogan was getting choked up in the middle of the ring, Sting was watching backstage and Sting just wasn't buying it. The Stinger said he saw Hogan's performance in Suburban Commando and he knows how good of an actor Hogan is. But still, the Hulkster said he's giving it all up and he's going to hold a formal celebration of his career next week on Impact. So the following week, Hogan comes out and he thanks the fans, he thanks Eric Bischoff, he thanks the Impact crew, and just as Hulkamania was about to stop running wild, Sting showed up. Sting has some footage he wants to show the audience, and the tape shows that Hogan and Bischoff had made up this whole retirement angle in an effort to get the Hulkster out of the Bound for Glory match. Acting on impulse, an enraged Hulk Hogan agreed to hand the company back to Dixie Carter if Sting could defeat him at Bound for Glory. Sting says that's all he needed to hear. The following week, a contract signing took place. Hogan says there will be no interference, no funny business. Sting vs Hogan at Bound for Glory will be one on one, man to man. Sting agrees with Hulk and he shakes the Hulkster's hand. Eric Bischoff comes out and he says that he'll finish Sting off at Bound for Glory if there's anything left. And Hogan attacks Sting from behind with a steel chair. Eric Bischoff laughs as Sting takes a beating in the middle of the ring. Band for Glory would turn out to be Hulk Hogan's final televised match, and while it's so far away from a technical masterpiece as humanly possible, it's still kind of fun to see Hogan vs Sting one final time. Hogan is pretty limited here, actually he's extremely limited here, but somehow he still ends up getting one of the loudest pops of the night when all was said and done. Dixie Carter was in the audience for this match, there was a lot on the line of course. Hulk Hogan comes to the ring first and then it's announced that Eric Bischoff's son Jackson James, better known by his real name Garrett Bischoff, will be the special referee. The Stinger comes out to a great ovation and here we go, Hulk Hogan vs Sting at Bound for Glory. Right after the opening bell, Hogan breaks his promise of a clean one on one match when he calls Ric Flair to ringside, so you just know that the dirtiest player in the game would be up to his old tricks. Hogan takes the early advantage and the crowd pops when Hogan hits a shoulder block and he goes through his posing routine. Sting finds himself on the outside and the nature boy attacks the icon of course. Flair and Hogan take turns at low blowing the stinger and Hogan uses a weapon that was given to him by Flair. No idea what this weapon was supposed to be by the way, maybe it was a metal block or something, I don't know. Hogan plays within his limitations here and as the match continues, Sting gets busted open and so does the Hulkster after Sting uses Flair's weapon against Hogan. Sting has to take care of both the Nature Boy and the Hulkster during this bout but in the end, Hogan couldn't take the pain of the Scorpion Deathlock. Hogan taps out and the referee has no choice but to call for the bell. 
Ric Flair and Immortal attacked Sting after the match. Gunnar and Bully Ray hit Sting with chairs. Eric Bischoff goes to hit Sting with a chair, but his son takes it away, beginning a face turn here for Jackson James that absolutely nobody asked for. Bischoff hits his own son with the steel chair before turning his attention back to Sting. The icon takes a beating. He crawls to Hulk Hogan for some help. And what do you know, good guy Hulk Hogan rips off his shirt and the Hulkster helps Sting take out Immortal. The ring gets cleared, Bischoff takes a big wind up punch from Hogan and Dixie Carter is seen celebrating in the audience. Sting and Hogan shake hands to end their final rivalry. And that's the main portion of the Joker Sting storyline wrapped up. While the insane icon would still wear the Joker face paint, the actual unhinged character was turned down a few notches following the Hogan match. On the following episode of Impact, Sting came out without the face paint. He said he would give Impact Wrestling back to Dixie Carter and that goal was achieved at Bound for Glory. Hogan then comes out and he's back in the red and yellow and Hogan says he was listening to Eric Bischoff instead of leading by example. Dixie Carter then makes an appearance, she's grateful for Sting's help and Sting gets offered an executive position within the company. Sting is asked if he would help with the day to day running of Impact Wrestling and Sting accepts this offer. With his new position within Impact Wrestling, Sting would have a lighter match schedule, but when it was time for the Stinger to step back into the ring, we would see the insane icon once again. Bobby Roode failed to capture the heavyweight title at Bound for Glory. Sting booked a match between champion Kurt Angle and James Storm on the Impact following the pay-per-view and Storm won the title. Bobby Roode would then defeat James Storm to win the belt, so Roode was now the champion and he was also a heel. Roode would eventually join Immortal and the Stinger would have his hands full dealing with Roode, Bully Ray, AJ Styles, Jeff Jarrett and eventually Jeff Hardy. On the December 22nd episode of Impact, Jeff Hardy announced that Bully Ray and Bobby Roode would face him and his tag team partner in a street fight. Bully Ray said that Jeff Hardy has no friends because all his friends bail due to Jeff's personal problems. Sting's music then hits and the Stinger walks into the impact zone with his head turned. When the Stinger reveals himself, he's back in the Joker face paint. This tag team match was really good too. Sting and Hardy got the win after Jeff hits a top rope splash that sent Bobby Roode crashing through a table. Sting and Bobby Roode would again butt heads on the 9th of February episode of Impact. Sting came out with no face paint to confront Bobby Roode and Bully Ray. The Stinger booked a tag team match for the heels that would see James Storm team up with Sting himself. And once again, Sting came out wearing the Joker face paint. Sting and Storm won this match. Eventually, Bobby Roode and Sting would meet in the ring in a one-on-one -on -one capacity. Roode tried to force Sting into retirement when it was speculated that Sting was done with wrestling, but the Stinger wrestled Roode at the Victory Road 2012 pay-per-view. Sting had half of his face painted like the Joker and the other half painted like the Crow. Bobby Roode would defeat Sting here in their no holds barred match. The feud would continue on. Sting faced Bobby Roode on the 31st of May episode of Impact in a non-title lumberjack match. Sting won this match and on the 7th of June Sting teamed up with AJ Styles and Kurt Angle to defeat Bobby Roode, Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian. During this time Sting had gave up his management position in favour of Hulk Hogan and because Sting had pinned Bobby Roode in the lumberjack match the Hulkster granted Sting a title match against Roode at Slammiversary 10. Sting was unable to capture the title in this main event match a little confusion over Roode submitting on the outside of the ring led to Sting thinking he won the match but in the end Bobby Roode smashed a bottle over Sting's head. Roode left Slammiversary still the world champion.
Sting's next big rivalry would feature the Aces and Eights faction within TNA, and really, that's a video for another time. The next chapter in Sting's career really requires me to cover the debut of Aces and Eights, and that's something I plan on covering in the future, but for the most part, that was the end of the Joker Sting and TNA. I really do recommend you check this period of Sting's career out for yourself, though. Sting's promos were so entertaining when he portrayed the insane icon, and even Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair gave some good performances. For fans who maybe wrote off TNA back then, do yourself a favour and check this stuff out. I guarantee you won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching and take care.